Hello, my name is Larry. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, let me start off with saying that we're going to try to put this video together today and uh, I apologize for the background noise, but uh, we've got a five lane highway out in front of the shop here and it's like a racetrack. Uh, I put this video together to try to answer some of the questions that I get and emails about dimensions and sizes on what I used and you know the width and the height and stuff like that and, and hopefully I can answer most of your questions if not uh, post something in the comment section I'll be glad to uh, update it for you to answer any questions you might have um, to start out with this is a homemade sawmill it's not a production made thing it's just something that I put together and it's been it's worked very well it's done a really good job I've, I've cut a lot of material with it already I'm, I'm in the process right now of updating the actual the guides on it uh, you can see right here I'm putting one together uh, laying up against the engine here but I'm revising the guides I'm using this old setup here that I've had on it for the last six months and it's bulky it's cumbersome but it does work <clears throat> and uh, I had another guy set on the other side over here that was made out of this stuff here I was trying different types of guides and it was set up on the same thing of bearing but uh, we're trying to update it and make it a little nicer to start out with the sawmill um, is uh, the blade is 196 inches overall uh, it's one and a half inches wide I'm not gonna say where I get the blades from because nobody endorses me on those I pay the outrageous price that I pay for them but uh, the blade I got on here is a little more expensive than most of the standard blades and it lasts a whole lot longer so you know you get what you pay for out there in the blade were in the sawmill industry the uh, the wheels themselves are actually 18 and 3 quarter inch diameter and we do have a few of those for sale on our website at tx-coverage.com under the industrial section we also sell the, the wheel with the belt uh, which you see here it rides in the v-groove that, that grabs the actual blade itself the the shafts that I'm using on the pulleys are one inch diameter I'm running pillow, pillar rocks hold that the plate that they're attached to is 5 16 inch thick and I'll get you the width on that give me a second here I know I'm trying to take a little, a little bit of guesswork out because when I built this one here uh, nobody really helped me they're 10 inch by 10 inch and with the way I've got it set up now they're spaced out what you see right here on the adjustment end uh, an inch and seven eighths now the measurements from this section right here I'm pointing to all the way down to this other end over here where this nasty welding job is is actually uh, let me see where I wrote it down here or let me get you a measurement Sorry about all the bouncing around, but I'm trying to do this by myself, folks. Give me one second here. It's actually 62 and 5 eighths. Like I said, now that's from the inside, down on the plate on that end, all the way down to the inside of the plate on this end. So that'll give you some dimensions there. The outside dimension from here all the way to the other end down here to the outside is 60 inches. So that gives you the width of the overall top part of the sawmill. Now, this section here, measured from the outside of this two and a half inch square tubing here all the way to the other end to the outside is 60 and one half inches so outside to outside left post to, to the right post which is right here is 60 and a half that gives you enough room for this piece of square tubing to travel up and down and slide slide evenly the pulley that is on the back of this thing right here that is attached to the drive on the motor or attached to the pulley on the back of the motor is 11 and a half inches in diameter. Now they make two different types of shafts. 
one you could use this little squeeze collar or whatever they call it to uh, tighten it up and keep it in place or the one it presses on the shaft. I prefer to like this type here because I can move it very easily if I need to. Pull the screws out, put them back in these two holes, it pulls this out, put them back in, it tightens it back down in the place you want it to. I've also, on the pillar blocks on this end, I started out with having the degree or the angle of this wheel further out this way by a fraction, maybe a quarter of an inch. Keep in mind that whenever you load this blade on here and you put a lot of tension, there's going to be some stress, fatigue in, in this area here all the way through the system, all the way out to where this blade, this blade is hugging this wheel. So what I did was, when I set it up, I did it, bring it out, like I said, a little bit angle this way, maybe a quarter of an inch. That way, whenever the blade tighten, you tighten the blade up, it's going to pull it back in and it's going to put a lot of stress on it. And then I also got some car shims to shim up the pillow block if I needed to line the blade or line the pulley on this end after there was tension on it. Now, once you get this end set over here, you pr pretty much don't have to do anything with it. The only time you're going to have to do any adjustments is going to be on this end. And I did it the same way. When I set it up originally, I brought this pulley out a quarter inch this way. So if you're looking at this end of the sawmill all the way to the other end of the sawmill, you would say, well, the pulleys are out on each end. That is correct. When that blade tightens up, you're going to pull it right back in where you need it, and it's going to track real, real true. Now, on this end, the pillar blocks are attached. There's no shims in either side, as you see here. But I've incorporated my one-of-a-kind adjustment that I haven't seen anybody else use out there uh, on YouTube or on the Internet. Two 5 16 inch plates, half inch rod, all thread, nuts on the inside, and nuts on the outside. As long as you've got this wheel spaced out evenly here and on the other end in the same location, right here in this area, you got these two wheels lined up the best you can. 95% of the time you can get all the adjustments you need out of these boats here, these, the boats that are on these plates. Not really hard. People are, I think, a little intimidated by that setup, but wow, I'm going to build another sawmill here in the near future, and when I do, it's going to have the same setup. I really like it. It's easy to load the blade on. It's easy to adjust. I can usually change it out in less than five, six, seven, eight minutes. Uh, to go up and down on the sawmill, I've used this, uh, I guess you call it uh, mill thread rod. And all I did is put a little pulley up on top with another pillar block. That made me an old hand crank here out of some old round stock. Just weld it to it, pillar block with the bottom, pillar block with the top, with some chain up on top, driving both sides. It's a little adjuster here to take the slack out of the chain and the rod runs all the way down both sides bottom to top back on the side top to bottom and of course my old adjuster here is just uh he just slides back and forth loosen this bolt up loosen this bolt up here and I can slide this uh this back and forth if I want to cut a small log, but we haven't been cutting very many small logs. We've been cutting some pretty big stuff, usually 24 to 38 to 42 inches wide. The actual rollers that are on the bottom, these are stuck, uh, steel rollers and greasable fittings in the middle of them. Also, we see all these on our website at tx-covers.com under the industrial section. Uh, got any questions about those give us a call we'll damn sure send you send you a set of those no problem like I said I'm not sure if I covered everything that y'all need in this video uh, again I apologize for the background noise but uh, really don't have a good location to, to shoot these videos especially when you got a sawmill like this and I'm not gonna put it out there in the dirt and the mud uh, let me run around the back get you a shot of the little motor 
We're running a little Kohler Command, Command Pro 14, 429 cc engine. And you know, it seems to do a very good job for us. It never loads it up. I run it about three quarters throttle. It's an old motor that I've had about three years. I run it on a water wheel drilling machine that I built here recently also. I say recently, about four years ago. Running a little bit of centrifugal clutch on it. And uh, this is the original clutch. I've been running it for the whole year with no problems up to date. So it must be a pretty sturdy little clutch. All right, folks, if, you, if I've helped you in any form or fashion, hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, we appreciate it if you subscribe to our channel. I know that recently uh, YouTube changed the monetization uh, tactics on the YouTube channel. And uh, if you have less than 1,000 subscribers, uh, you cannot monetize any video videos. We would really appreciate it if you all help us uh, reach that 1,000 subscriber mark. Uh, all the help would be greatly appreciated. Like I said, hit the like and subscribe button. If you got any questions or comments, post them below. I'll respond to them as quick as I can. Uh, so this video was to take some of the guesswork out of uh, trial and error on trying to build one of these things. It does help if you've got some kind of starting points. And I, I'll be glad to uh, actually give you anything I can on it. I don't know if I mentioned the center, uh, the dimensions from the center of this shaft to the center of this shaft. But uh, if I didn't, I'll mention it. If I did, I'll mention it again. It is 62, I mean 60 and a, 68 and a half center of this shaft to center of this shaft. And that's with the 196 inch blade. Thanks for watching, folks. Hope you liked the video.